Chapter 22 Quiet Travels Techno wakes up to the sound of Tommy crying, which has become a rather familiar noise over the past few weeks. At this point, Techno wishes he would stop crying entirely, but he supposes that Tommy is cute enough to be forgiven. Besides, Phil told him babies cry as a way to call for help, because Tommy can't talk yet. Techno disagrees. Tommy can talk, he just doesn't do it well. Once they get to the safe place, Techno's going to teach him how to talk properly. Blinking his eyes open to a dim morning, Techno finds the sun to be not quite up yet, the light dull against the walls of the cave they're sleeping in. His brother is warm next to him, so Techno holds him tighter, shifting his head up to get Will's hair out of his face. He instead rests his chin on Will's hairline, glancing beside him to see if anyone is going to calm the crying child anytime soon. Sure enough, within just a few moments, Phil's up as well, and Techno can hear his voice speaking softly, trying to calm Tommy down from whatever made him upset in the first place. Techno stares off into stone as he listens to Phil talk, and feels his chest swell with something fond, grateful. He feels happy. He closes his eyes again, content in his brother's arms, with Phil's voice echoing through the cave. What's wrong, mate, hmm? Phil whispers, Tommy whining with another small sob. Shh, shh, what happened? You're all right, you're okay. There's a soft shh of feathers dragging across the floor, and Techno tries to imagine Phil sitting up, Tommy held carefully against his chest. He tries to imagine the cave entirely, the forest outside, Skeppy and Bad keeping watch among the trees. He blinks his eyes open when sleep tries to take him back under. He doesn't want to go back to sleep yet, even with how calm the mood is. He wants to stay awake in this moment. Shh, Phil says to Tommy as he gives another upset whine. You'll wake up your brothers. Wilbur shifts from where he's resting beside Techno, and it seems like he hadn't been asleep after all. He glances up to Techno, and Techno looks down at him, the two of them sharing a quick look. They settle back to where they were, and continue pretending as if they're asleep. A quiet chirp sounds through the cave, and Techno's ear flicks as he focuses in on the noise. Phil's been doing that often, usually around Tommy. Both Will and Techno think it's rather strange. Techno always assumed that just because Phil looked like a bird, that didn't mean he would sound like one too. Wilbur seemed less surprised over it than Techno, though. He's a bird, Dad, Will had said, and Phil had burst out laughing at that. Technoblade wasn't impressed. Phil's not a bird. He's Phil. Those are two different things. Tommy's crying settles down entirely, and the cave lapses back into comfortable silence. Will peeks up over Techno's shoulder in curiosity and Techno tries to tilt his head to look back as well. It's been a few weeks with Tommy's company now, but they'll never give up a chance to interact with him. He's so tiny. Technoblade could hold his tiny hands for hours. Phil seems to sense eyes on him, because he turns his head away from the baby in his arms, and instead looks back at them. And both Wilbur and Techno immediately slam back down against the floor, pretending to be asleep. I saw you, Phil calls, and Will quietly giggles into Techno's shoulder. How long have you both been awake? Techno responds right away, not seeing any reason in pretending to be asleep now that he's been caught. I just woke up, he answers, turning away from Wilbur to rest on his back. Will makes an annoyed noise at Techno pulling away. Will was up before me. The crying baby woke me up. 
Will says simply, grabbing at Techno's shirt to keep him as a pillow. Even with how he says that, there's no true irritation behind his words. Is he okay? He adds a moment later, only proving his concern. He's all right. Phil hums, rocking Tommy in his arms and getting a small, curious noise in response. Tommy reaches his hand up at Phil, and Phil pokes a finger into his tiny palm, letting him latch on. Probably just a bad dream. I hate bad dreams. Wilbur sighs. The shit. Techno snorts. Did you two sleep well? Phil asks, his wings shifting from behind him as he looks around for his bag, his sword. Technoblade reaches out for his own weapon, and he finds it beside him, exactly where he placed it last night. It's cold to the touch, and Techno frowns, pulling his hand away and leaning into Wilbur. Yeah? Will responds, and Techno gives a vague, hummed agreement that he did the same. Do we have to keep walking today? Do you want to get home in the next week or in the next month? Phil asks back, and Wilbur gives a grumpy noise. We're nearly there, don't worry, mate. That's what you said last week. Yes, but then we got sidetracked by those hunters, remember? They threw us off track. That's why we're taking longer. Ugh. Phil just smiles, shaking his head as he pulls his hand away from Tommy's grip, gathering his things before standing to his feet. Tommy fusses a bit with the sudden movement, but then he settles, tail swishing around behind him as he tries to look over Phil's shoulder for anything interesting. If you're both up, then, we should get going and eat on the way, Phil says, walking up to them and leaning down over their heads. No, Techno mutters, squeezing his eyes shut. I'm asleep. Me too. Wilbur agrees, but he's smiling too much to be anywhere near convincing. Phil gives an amused scoff. Come on, the day's started. He nudges one of them with his foot, and gets a hand batting him away in return. Techno makes a displeased groan. Few more minutes? Wilbur bargains. The sun is barely even up. That's a good thing. Phil hums. We could go watch the sunrise. I don't want to see the sunrise. Wilbur huffs. I want to lay here with Techno. Technoblade produces a noise of agreement. Phil rolls his eyes. But he relents, standing up straight and looking towards the entrance of the cave they're in. The forest is quiet and calm as he walks towards it and he does note that it's a bit earlier than when they usually wake up. He wouldn't complain about extra time to start off the day, but he also wouldn't want Techno and Will to be grumpy for the next hour. He'll just give them a few more minutes. If they've fallen back to sleep by the time he checks on them again, then he'll let them rest some more. If they're still up, then he'll drag them out to start walking, and hopefully go eat some food. He's got to be patient with them. They've been doing a wonderful job with all the traveling they've been doing lately. And there's been little complaint about how often they've needed to stop and hide. Traveling with three kids is difficult enough when hunters are trying to stay on their tail. It gets even more complicated when one of those kids is a baby, who doesn't really understand the weight of needing to stay hidden. At least Skeppy and Bad have been helpful. They offered to help escort them to wherever Phil was aiming to go and Phil took the offer gratefully, appreciating any sort of help he could get. Their house in the forest had been practically surrounded by hunters when they first set off, and Phil was a little sorry over the amount of broken windows they had gotten from protecting Techno and Will. Bad had assured him that it was fine. Skeppy just said it was to be expected, especially since they were housing literal apocalypse starters. Phil still apologized either way. And if he had more time, he would have offered to help repair some of the damages. However, time was a quick, short thing, and Phil didn't have any to spare. 
dawdling anywhere wasn't worth it, now that he had all his children underneath his wings, and the only thing he wanted to do was get somewhere safe. So they left, just a single day after Phil arrived, all of them rushing through the trees to get away from the sheer amount of hunters that had taken camp in the forest. It was difficult to even make it out without any injuries, but thankfully they managed. Not without some more blood on their hands, but either way, they managed. Once they were out, it was just a matter of getting far away and making sure no one had their trail. That took a little while, although that is time well spent. It is better to be safe than sorry, and Phil will gladly travel around in circles for a whole week to lose hunters, rather than let them find where he's planning to live. At the top of a hill, in the middle of nowhere, there's an old, small house that Phil built with his own hands a long while ago. It's hidden away perfectly. Mountains around it, with a river nearby, and a town far off. Only a few days' travel by foot. The surrounding forest there is dense. Dangerous to anyone who tries to travel into it. And that's precisely why Phil chose to live there in the first place. The clearing with his home is safe to stay in. But getting through the forest is another story. Because of the terrain and the way the land is tilted. Add a few traps in between those trees, a watchful eye from the sky, and the place is perfect. It's somewhere he can call home. He left it behind over a decade ago so he doesn't expect it to be in the best shape. But it should be somewhere to start. This time around, he's got a good reason to live there. And he's got a good reason to stay. This time, he won't be alone. Tommy babbles out into the morning air as Phil brings himself out of his thoughts, and he smiles down at the child in his arms, readjusting his hold on him. It's a nice morning, huh, mate? Phil asks, tilting his head up towards the sky, watching the sun slowly rise. It's been getting warmer these past few days. Phil knows Techno loves the heat, loves basking in the sunlight when he can, but he's not so sure about Wilbur. From what he's seen so far, he doesn't think Will enjoys the heat all that much. He's much more fond of the cold the freezing type of temperature he might get from a rushing river. With time, they'll get that sort of cold, but right now he thinks summer is starting to approach, and he mentally prepares himself for the complaints of melting alive in the sun. Tommy stares up at Phil, an intense focus in those bright eyes of his as he looks upon the sky. Phil grins wide at the sight then plants a loving kiss right at the side of his young face. Tommy scrunches up his nose with a frown, but he doesn't cry, and instead resorts to staring at Phil with the same sort of intensity. Hello, Phil greets, and Tommy puffs up his cheeks, his tail swinging back and forth against Phil's arm. Let's go see if Will and Techno are up yet, hmm? Tommy gives a noise that could be an agreement, could not, and Phil turns and walks back anyways, heart full with love. He ends up finding Techno and Wilbur fast asleep, and decides to give them a few extra minutes of rest. They continue to travel with Phil's instructions. He's the only one who actually knows where he's heading. So, he's the only one who has to read the map and point out where they have to go next. His wings itch to take flight, but he can't risk the chance of being seen. So he stays on the ground, where it's safe. It's slow going, walking through here, but it's safe. They travel in something like a line, Bad staying at the back to make sure no hunters will sneak up behind them and stay on their tail. Skeppy insists on being at the front. And while Phil had been hesitant about that at first, Wilbur had then assured him that Skeppy is stab-proof, 
so there's no worries of him being hurt by a stray arrow or something. Phil relented after that, at least. There's a few towns they pass by here and there, but they don't bother to try staying there for a night. Phil knows by now that's an awful idea. And even if the entire town swore to stay quiet, he knows that it wouldn't take long for hunters to come barging in with weapons raised. They do use the towns for supplies, however. Skeppy usually goes in on his own, since with a simple hood, he can pass well enough for some normal person. Bad is tall, a little intimidating at first glance, so he would draw far too much attention. Phil's just naturally well known at this point. His wings and face have been spread around the lands through word of mouth and through warnings written on paper. He couldn't go undercover in any town, even if he tried. The kids are completely out of the question. Besides, they don't want to go into town anyway. They'd much rather stay at Phil's side, stay out of sight. Skeppy's good at grabbing bargains, and he tends to come back with plenty of food to last them until the next town they'll pass. They eat, and they keep moving, and they rest with nothing but the night sky over their heads and the warmth of each other close by. Skeppy and Bad keep insisting on keeping watch, no matter how much Phil insists he could, too. You watch over your kids, Skeppy had argued, jabbing a finger into Phil's chest. You watch over your kids, and we'll watch over you. You have enough on your plate already. I can deal with a bit of lost sleep, mate. Phil deadpans. Skeppy, flapping a hand, unconvinced. Don't you both need rest, too? Oh, I don't sleep. Bad shakes his head. Phil, blinking. It's not a thing I do. Skeppy can, although he doesn't need it. He leans down, resting his chin on top of Skeppy's head with a smile. You look like you need it, though. Skeppy grins. Hey. Phil huffs. And before he can say anything back, that's when Tommy begins to cry once more, and Wilbur's calling him over to stop the tears. Although they're all technically on the run, at the risk of being hunted down and killed, Phil finds a strange calmness in the travel, in the company he has while walking through the wilderness. Technoblade and Wilbur often chat to each other in hushed whispers, smiles wide and laughing to each other. They talk with Bad and Skeppy, ask for stories from Phil, make up stories on the way. They play games and act out dramatic fights that Phil will never really understand, because there's apparently dragons and knights and evil wizards, and Techno is a king, but he's also a criminal, and Wilbur is his knight, but he's also a prince, and it's also childishly endearing. They sing, and they talk, and ramble on, and they look back at Phil with such love that it makes him want to pull them closer and never let go. Tommy is entertained with all the new sights he's given, all the attention that comes his way, and he stares and stares at anything that moves. He babbles, and he grabs, and he swings his tail with furrowed eyebrows, and there is so much life in those eyes. Phil would give so much to keep it there, keep it bright. He's so curious about Techno and Will, and sometimes it feels like he really does know who they are, really understands what they say, because he reaches out to them with such a look on his face that Phil can't understand. He's familiar. Technoblade had admitted to Phil one night, while Wilbur was asleep, and Tommy was snoring away with him. It's like with Will, he's... There's something there. I feel like I know him. Like I'm supposed to know him. Phil had wondered if that was the prophecy at play. Magic or not. But Techno didn't seem all that concerned about figuring it out. Guess that means they're my family. Techno simply accepted that. And Phil had kissed him on the head and held him close. Satisfied with that conclusion as well. I wish I felt like that with you too, though. 
You're still my son either way. Phil assured, holding Techno safely in his arms with the night silence wrapped around them. I know, but still. Techno wanted more, and Phil will admit, maybe he does too. If there's one good thing to come out of those damned prophecies, then maybe it could have been that they were all connected, always meant to be. Phil's always held a certain type of bitterness towards destiny and fate and all of that bullshit because of what it's taken and what it's led him to. But if that same sort of destiny brought him his sons, then he will, for just a moment, be grateful. They keep under the radar as they keep moving, slow and careful, and it's tedious, nearly annoying but it's worth it because no one knows where they are, and it shows. There are so many flyers out there with your face. Skeppy had told him one day, after returning with food and new supplies. The kids had huddled together to the side to chow down on their food, and they chatter amongst themselves, completely unaware of what the adults were discussing over their own meal. What? Phil raises an eyebrow. Skeppy digging through his pockets to bring out a crumpled up paper, trying to smooth it out in his hands. Well, I mean, they are looking for us. No, no, but this was like, honestly kind of worrying. I'm worried about the people making these, but here. He holds out the flyer, Phil taking it from his hand. I saw at least 50 of those plastered all around town, as if more flyers are going to make it easier to find you. He snorts. Phil huffs at the depiction of himself on the flyer. Some sort of creature with sickly-looking wings, wide eyes, sharp, horrid claws. He seems like such a monster in this image, something terrible and deadly. It's not far off, to be fair. Although he's taken care to not let himself go to that extent, he can surely strike plenty of fear into anyone if he were to push it just a little farther than what he's used to. The description below the drawing is short and to the point. Avian with black wings, wanted dead or alive for harboring monsters of the apocalypse. The number underneath that is impressive. Phil makes a noise of interest at the amount. That's a shit ton of money. He's worth a pretty penny by the looks of it. And all he's done to earn it is be a dad. What a world. Almost makes me want to turn you in. Skeppy grins, and Bad whacks him on the arm. I'm joking! Phil laughs. They're really starting to get desperate about this now, though, aren't they? Bad notes, holding his hand out for the paper. Phil gives it over, turning his attention towards his food. They really think you're trying to... What, end the world? Well, you see. I'm secretly raising the children of the apocalypse, so that way I can destroy the entire world as the angel of death. Phil says, according to everyone. Skeppy poorly holds back a laugh. Will you be all right where you plan on going? Bad asks, slight concern twisted into his tone. Are you sure no one is going to find you there? I've lived there before. Phil shrugs with one shoulder. Granted, no one was actively looking for me at the time, but I was still never found. It's a good spot. Bad frowns, holding the flyer against his chin with a thoughtful look. Skeppy chews on his food with a stare towards his partner, and he glances at Phil, then at the kids sitting nearby. All right. Skeppy sighs, Bad looking at him with interest. Guess we're finding a new place to live, then. What? Phil asks, mouth half full. Well, it's going to take so long for us to get all the way back to home, and, you know, that place is half broken already, so I think maybe a new house is in order. Skeppy hums, taking a bite of his food. Although not too close to you. It'd still be better if you and your kids are completely out of sight. Wait. Phil catches on, holding up a hand. Oh, and we've lived there for so long, too. A change would be nice. 
Bad nods, seeming pleased. We could be neighbors, although we'd be far. You guys don't have to do that. Phil protests. Believe me, we'll be safe. I'll keep them safe. You can go back to your own home. Who keeps you safe, then? Bad asks, and Phil makes a face. Anything could go wrong. You never know. Look, we've been taking in guests and watching over random people for the past many, many years. Skeppy says, raising his eyebrows. You're not winning this one. You just don't know the type of danger you could be put into trying to protect us. Phil tries to say. And Skeppy makes an unconcerned noise, waving a hand. I mean, the hunters the hunters were the most action we've gotten in a long while. Here I thought I was getting rusty at throwing a punch. Apparently not. Skeppy grins. It's fine, really. Bad reassures. We'll just check in every now and then, see how you guys are doing. He looks towards Wilbur and Techno, trying to get Tommy to eat from their spoon. And he smiles. I'd like to watch them grow up. They deserve better. They deserve everything. Phil agrees. Chapter 23 Monstrous Wings They travel for another week, staying behind the cover of forest trees and sneaking their way around any nearby towns. It takes a while for them to get somewhere with any real reward, and Phil doesn't blame his kids when they start to get a little impatient. Wilbur ends up refusing to walk at one point, sitting in place and saying that his feet hurt. Techno sits down beside him, joining him in his little strike, with the complaint that his hand hurts, so they just have to stop walking for the day and take a rest. His hand was perfectly fine. He had gotten a small scratch from sparring with Phil a day prior, but apparently that injury was grievous enough that he could not possibly take another step. He pretended to not hear Phil's point of his hand not affecting his walking ability. We're getting close, I promise. Phil tells them, standing beside them with Tommy sleeping quietly in his arms. The kid had been sleeping a lot these past few days, and Phil thinks that might be because of the travel too. This entire ordeal might be tiring them all out, to be honest. You've said that like seven times. Wilbur huffs, leaning heavily into Techno's shoulder. Techno not taking his weight, and instead letting the two of them just fall onto the dirt floor. They lay there, with poorly held back giggles. And I mean it. Phil grins, hearing Skeppy snort from behind him as Will gives a mocking noise. Really? We're going to be walking forever, Technoblade declares. And Wilbur hums in agreement, seeming resigned to their new fate of being forced to march around in the wilderness all the time. Forever and ever until I'm all old and dusty. No. Phil laughs softly, cradling Tommy close as he circles around them both, nudging his foot gently at Wilbur's arm. Come on, up. I can't. Wilbur raises an arm up towards the sky, as if he's summoning something from the clouds. My legs, they're broken. Techno doesn't even try to hide the snort that comes with that. You were walking like two minutes ago, Skeppy calls out, and Wilbur tilts his hand in his direction, then flips him off. Skeppy screams in offense, bad yelling with him, but for an entirely different reason. Wilbur cackles in glee. Phil rolls his eyes, only fond. We can take a break in a bit, okay? I swear we're really, really close. How close? Wilbur squints up at him, a small frown tugging at his lips. Hmm. Phil takes a step back, pretending to think about it. Well, I'd say we'll arrive there in a day or two. Techno shoots up from the ground. Really? He exclaims, 
Wilbur jolting with surprise from how quickly Techno had gone from being at his side to nearly jumping up onto his feet. Yes. Phil nods, giving a warm smile. He's kept track of the map and their progress. It's not far now. There's a grassy field that should be up ahead, one that he used to fly over for hours when he had nothing more to do. Those flights had always been too thoughtful, too lonely. He wonders if, this time around, he can carry someone up there with him. Past the field, he knows that's where there will be the start of a few mountains surrounded by forest, and past that, an old home he left a long while ago. The town he remembers shouldn't be far off. It's the only town around for miles, and from what he remembers, it had been small, a little isolated. Perfect for when he had needed to drop by and grab a few things without many questions. Usually, he was self-sufficient on his own, but some stranger's company never hurt. Now he wonders if this town's company will be different if he goes to visit again. Would they know his face? Are there flyers up on the buildings, calling for him and his children dead or alive? Maybe so. Maybe not. Either way, it'll be a little while until Phil actually goes back there at all. He doesn't want to depend on that for supplies. The more breaks we take along the way, the longer it'll be until we're there. Phil tells them, shrugging lightly as Techno stares with wide eyes. Wilbur seems a bit more willing to travel now, but there is still that slight grumpiness sticking to his expression. Unless you guys are actually tired? I'm not. Techno shakes his head, getting up from the ground and brushing the dirt off his clothes. Wilbur sends him a look of betrayal, and Techno whacks him in the side with his foot. I'm injured! Wilbur cries out instantly, Phil scoffing. Oh no, however will you walk now? Techno deadpans. But there is a small smile on his face that betrays his flat tone. Guess he needs to be carried, he says, looking directly in Bad's direction. Bad blinks back, Wilbur giving a dying noise when Techno kicks him again. Techno, don't kick your brother. Phil says. He's injured, Techno says. And that should be reason to not kick Wilbur, but Technoblade doesn't seem to think so. Bad, Bad, come pick him up. Oh. Bad falters, before humming with something kind. He could sit on my shoulders while we walk? He offers, glancing towards Phil. Phil looks down at Wilbur. Will? Fine. I- Stop it. I can be carried by- Techno, I'm gonna kick you back! Wilbur swings his legs up into the air, Techno running out of range, instead heading behind Phil and tucking himself away in his feathers. Phil feels Techno's hands grab gently onto his wings, and he shakes his head with a smile, Wilbur sitting up with a glare. Bad ends up carrying Wilbur for the rest of the way, Will sitting high on his shoulders and reaching up towards the tree branches as they travel. Eventually, Techno gets curious, and he gets a turn being carried as well, enjoying the height. At that point, they've doomed Bad, who's fallen into the fate of needing to carry the kids around when they get lazy. Techno's not sure what to expect when they actually get to the safe place. Sure, it'll be home. And sure, it'll be out of sight of the hunters. But other than that, Techno doesn't actually know anything more. At first, he hadn't been concerned with the details. As long as he had Phil, it would be good enough. As long as Wilbur was beside him, and Tommy stayed safe, then it was enough. But now, he's a little curious. So, he asks questions. Is it a big house? Phil smiles, looking down at Techno with a hum. Not really, but we could make improvements. Is it really old? He laughs. It's definitely got some history. 
Is there a forest? A river? There should be a river nearby. And it's right in the middle of the forest. Then Wilbur caught on with the questions. And they both turned to Phil for the answers, giving their curiosities to him. He answers each one, without fail. Are there animals nearby? Techno asks, as they eat their measly dinner for the night. Maybe. They do live there, too. Are there people nearby? Wilbur questions, just before they go to bed. Phil pauses with a thoughtful silence. There's a town. But it's a little far, and they won't be visiting any time soon. What if we make a farm there? Techno suggests. Early in the morning. Phil, still a little groggy, as Wilbur curls up at his side. With a bunch of plants. Well, I did want to make a garden. Phil nods. And we do need food somehow. Are Bat and Skeppy going to live in the house with us? Wilbur whispers, tugging at Phil's hand as they start their walk for the day. Bad and Skeppy talking to each other just up ahead. You said the house was small. How are they going to fit? I said the house could just use a bit more extra space. Phil corrects, squeezing Wilbur's hand in his. And Skeppy and Bad had wanted to make their home away from ours, but they still want to be nearby so they can visit. Can we have blankets at the house? Techno asks, swinging around a dirty stick, hitting at a passing tree trunk. And a lot of pillows? All the pillows, mate. You'll even have your own bed, I promise. Techno had only scrunched up his nose a bit at that. He doesn't want to sleep alone. He just wants a soft place to rest. Wilbur has been singing. The hours pass by slowly, and sometimes the silence is nice, just everyone continuing in the right direction towards where they need to be. But sometimes it's boring. And when Will sits on Bad's shoulders, his view higher than ever, he chooses to hum to himself. Bad sometimes hums with him, his hand curling loosely around his ankle for a moment. Skeppy whistles along occasionally. Phil whistles too, but it's much more precise than Skeppy's, the notes being quick and practiced. He sometimes whistles his own songs, but that's a rare thing. Wilbur's usually the musical one. His humming shifts into something like a tune, and eventually, a song, to which he repeats quietly into the air, entertaining himself with his own sweet voice. It's not quite like using his charm. Not really. His voice doesn't begin to ache with the use of it. Instead, there's just a quiet tingling on his throat, his words seeming to swirl around gently. Sunshine, mm -hmm -hmm. sunshine. Wilbur speaks under his breath, half humming, half singing. Which song is that? Bad asks, simply curious. Dunno, Wilbur answers honestly, shrugging his shoulders and resting his chin on top of Bad's head. I think I heard it once. It's very nice. Wilbur smiles. Thanks. They stop for the day, when the sun begins to set, the nature around them being lit up in a warm sunset color. Tommy's awake for once, yawning and playing with Wilbur, who holds on to his tiny hands and raises them up high with a giggle. Tommy's tail swings around as he babbles up at Will, and Techno sits beside them both, watching them interact with a fond warmth in his heart. They're both so familiar, and this feels so right. He wonders how Tommy is going to be when he's older. Bigger. He wonders how Wilbur will be. He stares at the black scales scattered across Tommy's face, a little shiny against the light, and he tries to imagine that chubby face as something a little older, maybe his own age. Somehow, he's not very happy with the thought. He likes the young face. It's squishy. He looks to Wilbur's scales instead. 
They don't exactly shine like Tommy's. They shimmer, a pretty blue against his skin. They look nice with his hair, with it being braided back at the moment, courtesy of Phil. Techno runs a hand over his own braid with a hum. It's been falling apart since, like, an hour ago. He ought to ask Phil to redo it. Technoblade? Phil calls. Techno turning his head away from his brothers, seeing Phil standing off to the side by the trees. He reaches a hand out, beckoning Techno over as he glances at something off to the side. Come here for a second. Skeppy glances over from where he and Bad are sorting out their dwindling supplies. Bad is trying to talk to him, noting the low amount of food they have. But Skeppy's attention stays on Techno, as he gets up and walks over, curious as to what Phil needs. Come look. Phil smiles, crouching down to Techno's level, resting a hand on his back. Over there in that direction. He points past the branches, towards a mountain off in the distance. It's a pretty sight, with the sunset against it, lighting it up in red and orange. Techno leans forward, squinting a little. That's where our home is going to be, Phil whispers, and Technoblade whips his head towards him, eyes wide. Phil gives him an overjoyed smile, nearly giddy with it and Techno slowly grows a smile in return. Look, look. He pulls Techno closer, pointing a finger up at the mountainside, Techno giving all his attention to him. Right there, right there, in that little area where the mountain curves in, there's a hill right beside it. I built the house there a long time ago, so it's going to be a little worn down by now, but it'll be right there, with the sunset over the mountaintop. Techno nods, listening to each word, his heart growing with anticipation. He wants to run towards it, wants to tug Wilbur off the ground from where he's sitting, demand for Phil to fly them over right now. But he's patient. He can wait. Besides, it's so close. It won't even take much more than an hour to get there. Wilbur wakes up to Tommy crying. It's not a normal type of crying. There's a bit of pain woven into it. Tommy wailing out into the night, with Phil's hushed voice speaking quickly. Bad and Skeppy are talking, too. Their voices a little panicked. Worried. And Tommy is nearly screaming with his sobs. Something is wrong. Techno. Wilbur immediately reaches a hand out to his brother, pushing him awake as fast as he can. Technoblade, he whispers, sitting up and leaning over him, Techno opening his eyes with a grumpy look. It fades away as he hears Tommy, though, and he sits up abruptly, nearly smacking foreheads with Will. What's going on? Techno asks, looking around trying to see past the dark. He hears Tommy's cries, and his heart drops upon hearing the way it sounds desperate. Wilbur? I don't know. Will answers honestly, fear curling into his heart. He searches around, looking in the direction of the noise, and he spots Phil sitting on the ground not that far away, Bad and Skeppy huddled up beside him. Techno crawls forward, Wilbur grabbing at his arm, not willing to be left alone. Technoblade just grabs him by the hand and pulls them both onto their feet, the two of them stumbling through the dark towards Phil. Fucking shit, shit, of all times... Skeppy is swearing, his hands grabbing at the supplies scattered around them, having a bit of a frantic energy. Skeppy! Bad hisses. Sorry, sorry. Dad? Wilbur calls, and Skeppy freezes, looking up. Wilbur can't see his face in the dark, but he can see Phil, his eyes glowing bright against the shadows around them. What's... is Tommy okay? 
Bad moves towards them nearly instantly. Hands held out, trying to cover Phil from view. Oh, no, no, everything is okay. We just had a bit of a scare. He kneels down in front of them both, his voice reassuring. What happened? Techno asks, trying to look over Bad's shoulder. Bad is tall, though, so it's a bit hard to do. Is Tommy hurt? I... well... Bad holds a hand out, maybe to offer some comfort, and Wilbur pushes it away, leaning onto Techno with a snarl. Fucking move! Wilbur swears, and Bad doesn't even comment on the swear. Boys, Phil says, and immediately Wilbur calms down, Techno lifting his head. Skeppy, here, here. Yeah, I, okay, I got him. Go on, go ahead. Skeppy responds, and Bad scoots to the side, Phil quickly making his way over and kneeling down on the ground beside them. Tommy continues to cry, but it's just a little muffled, his face pressed against Skeppy's shirt now. Dad? Dad, what's... Wilbur breathes out, on the edge of a sob rather quickly, with the thoughts running through his head. Did, did something happen? He reaches out towards Phil, and Phil holds a hand up to make him pause. Uh, uh, my hands are dirty, mate. I don't want to stain your shirt. Phil speaks quietly, gently. Techno only stares, squeezing Wilbur's hand a little too tight. Is that blood? Wilbur's eyes drop down to where Techno's looking, and sure enough, there is blood. Stained into Phil's palms, fresh, recent. Terror sinks into them both within the next second, cold and heavy. Phil sees the tears welling up and the panic coming in, and he leans in close, still speaking softly. Shh, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, okay? Just listen to me. He rests his hands down on the ground the dirt sticking to his fingers as he leans closer towards them. You know how Tommy has been sleeping a lot lately? Techno nods, biting his tongue as Wilbur curls his arms around his sleeve. Turns out that was for a reason. He was growing wings. Phil's own feathers shift with his words, stretching out a bit, blocking away Tommy's crying, the sight of Skeppy holding him carefully, Blood smeared over Tommy's back. Phil's missing his coat. Instead, it's currently on the ground beside Skeppy, a bit torn so they could clean off Tommy. Wings? Wilbur chokes out, Technoblade feeling just as baffled. Like, like yours? Past the worry, Techno finds the new information to be incredible. Tommy is just like Phil, then. Phil chuckles, shaking his head. No, not exactly. They're a bit different. But he is hurting a lot from them, so he's going to be crying for a bit. He pauses, then stands up on his feet, his wings folding out. He turns to Bad. I'm heading to the town nearby. Skeppy shifts from where he's sitting down. Whoa, hey, hey, wait a minute. Phil... Bad stands up as well, looking down at Phil with an argument on the tip of his tongue. It's the dead of night. I can fly over quickly and all we need is some sort of potion or medicine. Phil waves a hand, his mind already made up. I know where it is. I'm not arguing with you over this. Tommy needs something to help with the pain. He turns to Will and Techno, leaning down. You two stay here with Bad and Skeppy, okay? But... Wilbur goes to speak, Phil shaking his head. I know it's dangerous, but Tommy is really hurting right now, and we need something to help. Wilbur closes his mouth, an anxious feeling rippling down across his skin. He doesn't want Phil to leave anywhere, but Tommy is still sobbing, still crying with pain and he's not getting any better. Go. 
Techno suddenly says. Both Wilbur and Phil turning to him. Phil with slight surprise. Techno shares a glance with Wilbur, giving a tiny nod. Something like understanding settles onto Will's expression, and they both turn back to Phil, Wilbur holding a hand out and pushing at Phil's arm. Go. Don't wait, just go. Wilbur insists, and Phil nods, looking towards Bad as he steps back. Keep an eye on them, Phil says. Be careful. Bad responds, and Phil only nods, running out past the trees and taking flight into the sky. Late at night, while the town is quiet and asleep, a monster flies close. It circles around, searching the streets and the buildings, then swoops down with the cover of the dark, landing quietly behind a small shop. A window latch is snapped open with a sturdy rock, and the monster climbs through without a single noise, quick, quiet, searching. It looks through the shelves, poking at the bottles, leaving small bloodstains behind, red fingerprints on the glass. Eventually, it finds what it's looking for, and it takes it with a soft sigh, holding the potion in its clawed hands. A little girl with pink hair stands in the hallway with a tiny gasp. She's frozen still, a hand over her mouth, shock sinking past her shoulders as bright blue eyes turn towards her, watching, looking. The monster has wings. Big, black, feathered wings. And they shift as the monster stares, just as still as her. Then... The monster raises a finger up over his lips, giving a small smile through the dark. Shh, he says, and the girl nods, watching as the monster leaves just as quietly as he came, one bottle gone from her father's shelves. Phil takes the healing potion back to his son, knowing full well that even if that child says anything of seeing him, It'll only be taken as a child's late-night fear. A nightmare. He's got the wrong idea, though. She hadn't been scared. She was amazed. 